Hi everyone and welcome to the Project 39 tutorial on how to make a mini album. The mini album we're going to make in this series of tutorials is going to measure 8.5 by 9. I've decided on a large one um, just because this way you can get in pictures without having to crop it. By the end of today's session you'll have the cover and you'll have the base pages in. And the base pages are just a page with a pocket and there will be six of them in your mini album which isn't so many. All right, let me tell you about what supplies you'll need to get started. Um, you're going to need medium weight chipboard. Now I'll tell you the measurements as we go, but it's going to be eight and a half by nine. You'll need two of those and eight and a half by three, which actually if you have a 12 by 12 sheet, which is what I started with, you'll have this left over. You'll also need score tape so I use two different sizes of score tape. Um, comes in a package like that. So three eighths and a quarter inch. Um, you'll need a liquid adhesive. The one I'm using is the Art Glitter Glue. It's not glittery, but it is called Art Glitter Glue. It dries clear. It's um, uh, good for scrapbooking. I put this little top on. You can purchase the top similar to this uh, wherever you get the glue usually. And I use two different kinds of chipboard, I'm sorry, cardstock. Um, this one is an eight and a half by 11 at the 65 pound weight. And I also will use the 110 pound weight. Um, the Recollections brand. This is available at Michael's. You get a hundred sheets and I think it goes $15, $17, something like that. And I use that because the pages are it's stiffer and um, it just makes a nice flap on some of the pages. And then your normal uh, scrapbooking supplies. I, I might use um, a stylus to cut scissors. A bone folder. This bone folder I like using is from Recollection, so that's from Michaels, just because it's nice and wide here, which you'll see later why I use that. Um, ruler, pencil, um, paper trimmer, and scoreboard. You know, any paper trimmer will do. The scoreboard I use, the We Are Memory Keepers one. This is a portable one. It does fold up um, which is good and bad. It's good because you can take it with you but when you're trying to score you've got this division down the center which sometimes you have to adjust where your paper is. But any scoreboard will do. So grab your materials and let's get started. So as I said the first thing we're going to do is cut down our chipboard to eight and a half by nine, two pieces, and then you'll have it three inches by eight and a half. So that is what we need. I'm going to put that aside and grab my 12 by 12 inch cardstock. Um, you know, there is a, a grain to the cardstock. So when you fold it this way, it sort of it has some hesitation. When you fold it this way it gives much easier. I don't really worry about it too much on the rest of my mini album, but when I'm doing my cover page I do um, because we want it to bend and not crack and every little bit you can do to help you not crack on the spine helps. I'm taking my 3 8 inch score tape putting it right there on the end of one of the 12 by 12 pieces, grabbing my bone folder and burnishing real well. Okay, now that it's burnished, I'm going to peel off that tape and I'm going to place this piece right on top of that. 
if you have um, if your surface underneath has lines on it it helps you adhere it and burnish it real good this is probably the only time you'll get an opportunity to burnish the center area now I'm going to put this aside and bring back my chipboard and I'm going to use the score tape to go around the outside of all three pieces of chipboard. All right, now that we have um, put score tape and burnished real well on all uh, four sides, um, we're going to adhere the spine to our 12 by 12 paper that we've put together. So now it's 12 by 24. So um, in order to do that, what you need to know is once you've put these two pieces of paper together, the underside has a different seam than what you see on top. The seam is actually here because that's where the score tape that's where the overlap is so remember this is going to be the center of the paper so now that i've put the score tape on i'm also going to fill in the center area you know all this area with atg or you could use um, liquid glue so grab your atg gun and fill in all of the gaps uh, so then there's no air pockets so just use ATG, or if you want, you can grab some liquid glue. Just want to make sure when you put down this chipboard, it's not going to bubble up. So I'm just going to eyeball this. If you wanted to, you could measure the center of this and line it up with where the seam is on the other side. But as I said, I'm going to just eyeball it just to make sure it's in the right spot. Once I've put down the spine piece then I'm going to take my quarter inch score tape and run it from top to bottom of the cardstock oops there we go and also I'm going to burnish because this is probably the best opportunity to get into it so go ahead and burnish. Okay, and then we'll take the other pieces of chipboard. When the tape doesn't come off good, it's because you didn't burnish well. And again, I will take my ATG. Whoops. And I'm also going to take my art glitter glue, maybe overkill, but I like to make sure it's adhered real well. I really don't like when it bubbles up. It just messes everything up. And then you're going to take it and put it right next to that quarter inch piece of score tape. And there we go. And I'll do the other side, and then I'm going to turn it over and burnish it real well. So using the score tape, the ATG, and the art glitter glue is a lot of uh, different adhesives to use. You could just use one. You could, Some people will use a plain sheet of score tape. Um, I, you could use just glitter glue. I don't know that the ATG is strong enough by itself, but honestly, once you've put this down and you're going to fold the paper, this isn't going to go anywhere. So, um, I make the albums to sell. So I want to make sure that no matter what environment they go to, whether it's in a humid environment or a dry environment, that, uh, what I make is going to hold. So again, I might go a little crazy, but I'd rather it hold than not. Okay, and now that we've done that, I'm going to turn this upside down. 
taking the flat part of the bone folder and making sure everything is going to stay in place. And then after I've burnished it real well, I'm going to take the edge and go along the edge to cause a little indentation to help us when we go to fold. Alright, so there we go. Now I'm going to flip it over. And what we're going to do is take our scissors and trim off the corner. So you need to stay about an eighth of an inch away from the chipboard. So right about there. Okay. Let me move the center it. So right there. Now you could take your ruler and make sure you get a real straight line, but um, you just make a right angle cut like that. On all four corners. If you're unsure if it's your first couple of times, then use your ruler, draw a line. Uh, there is a tool called the Perfect Trim Ruler, I think it's called. Um, I think you can get it on perfecttrimruler.com or something like that. And it tells you exactly where the line needs to be. But, you know, after you've done it several times, then you'll know exactly where it needs to go. All right, now that I've done that, I'm going to take off my score tape that we put down in the center. And I'm going to take my score tape again. and put it on the outside of the chipboard. Um, different people do different things for cutting the... I'm looking for an implement. Different people do different things for cutting the score tape. I've seen people use their ruler and it gets a nice straight cut. You could use your scissors if you want to get a straight cut. Um, this is a, a Cricut tool to burnish. You could use that. And I suppose for neatness sake, you do want to have a nice straight cut. But really, the beauty of this score tape as opposed to red line tape is that it, it rips, it tears easily. And nobody's going to see this part. It doesn't have to be perfect in, in my book. All right. And then once you put it down, burnish it. And make sure you've got real good adhesion. You also should do the outside. Okay, and again, burnish. You can buy the score tape from multiple sources. Um, I think if you go to scorepal.com, you can buy it online. I've seen it in the past at joannes.com. I haven't seen it lately. There's a great store online called Country Craft Creation. And Country Craft Creation. So go to countrycraftcreations.com. And they also sell it. And their shipping is phenomenal. So you can find it in several places. It's a very good strong tape. Some people swear by, swear by it. It's very consistent for me. And again, since I sell the books, I want to make sure that what I make is going to last. 
So since I've been using it for a while and I've seen how it lasts on books that I've made many years ago, I stick with it. You know, if you, you get something and you know it works well, you stick with it. So that's what I do. Now I'm taking all of it off. Okay. Now we're ready to fold. So we're going to fold the large sides towards us, the large ends to the middle. Then I'll turn it upside down and do the bottom. But to do so, now we've already um, scored it a little bit with our bone folder, but to make sure you get a really crisp edge, I just put this down and fold it against itself. And then I also take some glue, put it on that edge, and sort of pull it, tug it. I make sure it's going to be a nice fold, but then I start from the center and pull it towards me. All right, so there's a little gap here, but it's it's not the end of the world actually you're not even going to see this part you know you'll see up up here which is fine it's just because i'm rushing just to get it in on video all right burnish real well ignore this part right now all right going to add the glitter glue i think it was made originally to adhere glitter but people have found it was such a good, strong glue um, that it's it's just been used for many other purposes besides to adhere glitter. It's made by the Art Glitter Institute. Um, Utah? I don't know. Artglitter.com. Oh, Arizona. Cottonwood, Arizona. You can find it in scrapbook stores. You usually can't find it in uh, retailers such as Michael's and Joann's and Hobby Lobby. You may be able to buy it from them online. I don't know. All right, so now that we have this corner, and I'm going to come in a little bit. So there's a little flap here. I did put glue on, so hopefully you still can see. But you're going to push this down. I'm going to actually pull it towards me just to make sure that that little flap is close to the chipboard. So here again, I'm going to point the tip in and push it down just so the tip, so the edge of the chipboard is covered up. And then that'll help you when you pull it this way. It's going to cover it. You're not going to have any overlap. I'm sorry, you will have overlap. You're not going to have any show. And I usually take my bone folder and push it down on that corner. So here I'll do it without glitter glue. This will come towards me. And that will go towards the center. So it's just real, it will cover the chipboard. You don't see the chipboard. Although I have seen, if you do see the chipboard, just grab some a uh, uh, black marker and cover the chipboard. Nobody will ever notice. You'll notice, but nobody else will. All right. And again, I'm going to push down on this just to flatten it out real nice. And then I'm going to stand this on edge and take my bone folder and score along the top run this along the top it flattens out that edge and just gives it a nice crisp clean look i don't know that anyone notices it but me but it's very satisfying to do so i do okay now now i'm going to take so again this bone folder is a recollections bone folder i have four other ones but this one i use for this purpose because it's about uh three sixteenths of an inch thick and so we have that quarter inch score tape there 
So if you gently push against um, this indentation, then eventually this will, you know, do it gently. Don't do it all at once. Just maybe 10, 20 times you're going to go back and forth. But it will push the cardstock against the double-sided tape below. And then I'll take it where the point is and push it so it's closer to the chipboard and gently and then turn it over and then gently fold and again you're going to push this paper into where the double-sided adhesive is the score tape and you're going to get a nice fold that way so I'm going to push this paper has some give to it you know it's just made of fibers um, they're stiff fibers but still they're fibers but it does have some give to it so if you don't force it, then it's going to move. Um, but one of the important things, a lot of people say their spines crack. The important thing is to make sure you have, I always use a quarter of an inch. Some people will use two thicknesses of the chipboard width. You know, what works for you? Just use what works for you. I've been doing it this way, and I've never had a spine crack. And then other people put Tyvek which is what those non-terrible envelopes are made of that you get at the post office, um, underneath the chipboard just to, uh, again, make it a little bit stronger. So if you want to go that extra step, you can. All right, there is our cover. Now we're going to move on to make the binding. Okay, so this portion is how to make the binding. This is an 8.5 by 11. 65 pound cardstock. Eventually we're going to cut it down to eight and a half. Oops. Uh, we're going to cut it down to eight by eleven. But I'm going to keep it eight and a half by eleven for right now. So if you hear that noise outside, it's a bird outside. It's not a person screaming. So I like to use a stylus that's got a ballpoint to it. I don't always like to use the bone folder to score. Uh, you want to have one that has a small point. This might be a little too small. You have to go gently with it. I also like using this Cricut stylus. This is supposed to go in, I think it's the old style Cricuts. Um, what I love about it is this is never dulled. You know, if you use a bone folder, eventually they dull down. This is never dulled. Um, so below in the description box I've written down exactly what the measurements are that I want you to score on. So the 11th inch side is up on the top. On my, you might see the lines, on my score board I've already marked in black ink because I always use these, almost always use these measurements um, to make the spine. So when to make the, the binding system. So what the binding system is, it's going to have a couple of peaks and valleys. The valleys will go up and it'll fold together and that's what you insert your page on. So the, the, val the mountains have to be the same width and then what's in between is what's actually going to adhere onto the spine and be the distance of the between the two pages, the gusset between the two pages. So I'm going to start at one and a half because I want a little bit of a wing. One and a half, then two, two and a half, two and seven eighths, three and three eighths, three and seven eighths, four and a quarter, four and three quarters, five and a quarter. Now, I told you already that this folds this this scoreboard and where it folds, I'm, I need to make a line an eighth of an inch away from that fold. And sometimes when I'm making a line, it wants to go in that fold. So I'm skipping this one. You don't have to, but the one that I'm skipping is five and five eighths. I'm going to go back and do it 
I'm actually going to make a line. But the next one after that, after five and five eighths, is six and an eighth, six and five eighths, seven, seven and a half, eight, eight and three eighths, eight and seven eighths. And that's what we have. Now I need to go back and do this one. So I'm just matching it up with the pattern for the rest. Oops. There we go. Okay, so I've scored. Now go ahead and grab your score tape. The top side that you pushed in has the indentations. The bottom side has like the, the mountains. This comes up. So I flipped it over. This is where we scored. I flipped it over and we're going to start on the bottom side first. First what I want to do is put, you know I missed one. Um, first what I want to do is put score tape in the gusset. So that's every three-eighths of an inch section. So we'll start here. And I'm not, I'm being messy. I don't have to worry about the edges because we're going to trim it. So you're going to do three-eighths, skip a half, skip a half, do three-eighths, skip a half, skip a half, do three-eighths. And I said I skipped a piece. I'm going to go back and do that. I know how it happens because this line isn't marked as well as the other ones. Okay. All right. So now I have the gussets with score tape. I also want to get the outside. Now if I had half, half inch or an inch, I would use that. I don't have any wider than this 3 8 so I'm going to put down two next to each other. This is on the wing of my of my piece. Okay. I'm going to take the opportunity now of burnishing. Okay, now I'll flip it over. And actually I'm going to show you this as an illustration. Okay, so here's the wing. Then you have a hinge, a hinge, and a gusset. Hinge, hinge, gusset. You can change the width of the gusset. Some people will use a half inch gusset. So you're just going to go half, 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 half. But you'll have to remember this is the gusset. Depends on how much you're going to put on your pages. If you embellish with flowers or something that's really thick, then you'll want a thicker gusset. Maybe make less pages. If, if you don't do any embellishment, I, I probably wouldn't go any thinner than the 3 8 But occasionally I have. If I do just an autograph book and it's just going to have just a page and a page and a page and no flaps or anything, then I might do a, a thinner gusset. Usually not. For a teeny tiny book, I might. So anyhow, that's what uh, your hinge system is going to look like. All right, so here we are again. And we've got, this is the top. And now I'm going to take my quarter inch score tape. So... Here's a half, here's a half, there's the three eighths. Right where the half inch meets, you're going to put the score tape. Let me show you. So there's half, I'm putting it on the bottom side. The next half, I'm putting it on the top part. So right where they meet, I'm going to put the quarter inch score tape. What do you do if you don't have quarter inch score tape? Well, I use that the score tape as a judge on how far my page is going to go down on the hinge. Um, you could make your hinge a little wider. 
Um, or you could just put the score tape down and your hinge will go down a little further. I probably wouldn't do that though because then if you go, if your page goes down to the very bottom, it doesn't turn as easily. In fact, it usually doesn't turn at all. So I guess in that case, I would, if I didn't have the quarter inch score tape, I would make the hinge uh, longer or maybe just use art glitter glue or a really strong adhesive. Okay, so now you see what I did where there was every half piece, I put the score tape matching each other. Okay, I'm going to burnish. Now as far as um, the construction of the book, the binding system is probably the most important thing to make sure it's it's strong because it's what keeps your pages together really. All right, remember I said this was eight and a half inches and we really need it to be at eight inches. Well, I'm going to take my trimmer. So I use this Fisker's trimmer, which I love because you can cut six pages at a time and you could cut chipboard with it. Every once in a while you have to replace the blade. I got a titanium blade. The most that you have to do though is replace this piece if your paper starts getting shaggy. You can turn this over so you can use this piece that comes out. You can use it eight different ways and then if you're handy you can take um, a sanding block or something and sand it down and do it all over again. All right, so I'm going to go in about a quarter of an inch and trim. And then here I'm going to measure, make sure I'm at eight inches. And make sure it's straight. And trim again. So that's why I didn't cut it. You can start out at eight and a half and just put the tape up to the edge, but this way you get a nice crisp clean edge. Okay, now the fun part. Well, it's all fun, but okay, where these two pieces meet, we're going to bend that. And I'm going to just go down the whole length of the paper. I'm not going to burnish it at this point. I'm just going to bend it. And, and you know, I'm creasing it with my hand. So the paper is getting trained to go where I want it to. All right. Now I'm going to put it flat down. And where there is, we want this to actually come up as a mountain. So I pull it up and then I fold it in and go back and forth. So I'm going to show you this way. I'm going to go like this and flatten that out. I don't know if that's a good way to show you, but when I'm all done, it'll make sense. If you have any questions about the process, just leave it in the description box and I'll get back to you. I don't always have good Wi-Fi um, or internet, but when I do, then, then I get back to you. Um, all right, so now I've pulled it all together and I'm bending it down this way. And that way and then I'm going to take off oh I forgot to put some tape down the tape I forgot to tell you to put down is the one inside the mountain so that's a half inch that's a half inch I'm going to take three-eighths of an inch tape and put it on one side towards the bottom of it That was silly. I was in such a rush to get it done that I forgot. And the reason we're doing this is because we're going to adhere the mountain together. And I'll show you what I made. And again, we're going to burnish. All 
All right, now I'll take these off. So you're going to take off every other one. And because we've folded the paper and it's sort of got a fold to it, I'm going to turn it over and I'll push it down and pull these pieces to meet each other. There we go. So that's what it's going to look like. That probably shows you better. And I'm going to take my bone folder, turn them that way. Now I'll turn them this way. And just burnish. Do it a couple of times because this is what helps the pages turn once you put it in your mini album. Okay. All right, and then the final step before we put this on is to grab a pair of scissors and trim. So I want to trim like this, just where the score tape is, the quarter inch score tape. So you're going to trim at a right angle to the edge of the score tape. You could go less than a 90 degree angle and do both sides. There are many different kinds of binding systems. If you just go on YouTube, you can research if you're you're not familiar with this one or if you want to try something different. This is just what oops, I missed one. This is just what I've used. And it seems to work for me and it seems to be easy for people to um, to make and to understand and to adjust if you need to adjust it. Okay, now we're done with that. We're going to grab the book and put it all together. Okay, let's adhere the binding to the spine of your mini album. So grab your binding. And before you actually put it down, figure out exactly where it's going to go. So place it on there and get an idea. Um, so this binding is eight inches and the book is eight and a half. So obviously you're going to have a quarter inch top to bottom. So just eyeball that. And then unless you perfectly measured where the seam is going to be, don't use that as a guide. Use though um, where, so the distance of the spine and where this is, you've got, oh, I don't know, half an inch maybe on each side of the last hinge piece. So that's probably where you want to center it. If when you're making a book, the back of the book is going to be thicker than the front of the book, like maybe the the front of the book is just going to have a pocket, but the back's going to have a waterfall and a flap, and you know that this side of the book will be thicker, then you want to give more room over here. But in this case, this book's going to be just about the same. So now that I've eyeballed it and know pretty much where it's going to be, I'm going to flip this over and just take out the center pieces in the gussets. So there will be five center pieces for the six pages. Remember these two on the end, these two are for this wing. And these are two or for that wing. And then very gently, again, eyeball it. You sort of know where it's where it's going to be. And what I try to do is just lay it down. So if I don't like it, I can still gently lift it up and move it. But it's pretty good the way it is. So I start with the center piece. And just using my finger, push this down. If you use a bone folder, it's going to scratch the paper and you can see it. I mean, it's not the end of the world if you do, 
but I try not to use my bone folder here. So I do the center, then one to the right, one to the left, two to the right, to the left, etc., etc., or left and right, whichever, whichever. All right. So now the center is adhered, but we still have the score tape here. Before I remove that score tape, I take my bone folder and go in this seam. Again, very gently. You don't want to tear the paper, but you want to crease it so it will know where it's going to go once you remove that score tape backing. Okay. And then I remove the score tape backing for that wing piece. And also, I know that this wing is going to have some extra give. You can do it now or you can do it later. I didn't put my pin in, so it's not coming out. So I'm just going to add some glue to the rest of the wing. And again, very gently, I'm going to pull this hinge in and push this down with my finger. Take my bone folder and push this down because now I really want this to go into where that indentation is because I want this piece, the binding, to meet up with the score tape that we put on either side of that spine piece. So gently do it and if you need to just bend this a little And then I take my bone folder and push this all right and do the same for this side so again we've already pushed this in and trained it that's where it's going to lay we'll pull off the backing of the score tape I'm going to add some glue here. Push this down. Use my bone folder again. Train it to go into that groove. Push this down. You know, we're, we have tape and we have glue. We want both to adhere. The reason I use two different adhesives is the tape will hold it while the glue is drying. If you just use glue, you, you're going to have to make sure it's, it's good. You could use just all tape, but the tape will hold it while the glue is drying. All right, and then I want to make sure it, it'll bend nicely, and it will. But I'm going to let this dry, and I'm going to let it dry flat. So we're done with this. I'm going to let it dry flat and then after maybe half an hour then I'm going to bend it, fold it, and let it dry in this position probably overnight before I do the next step. But we're done with that part. Let's move on to the next, making the base paper. Okay, I've grabbed my scoreboard and I have cut eight pieces of 60 pound five pound weight cardstock eight by eight I'm sorry six pieces eight by eight and six pieces eight by nine I'm going to move the eight by eight out of the way and take one of the eight by nine pieces I'm going to put the long edge up at the top and I am going to score half an inch and eight and a half And I'm going to do that to the remaining five pieces of the eight by nine paper. Half an inch, eight and a half. I'm going to put it on fast motion and do the rest.
Okay. Now I'm going to take my scissors and trim the corners because it helps reduce bulk and makes it so you don't really see. So when I say trim the corners, I'm just going to put scissors and trim up to that score line. You could go to the score line and your scissors will sort of rest there and go up. So trim the rest of the five pieces like that. Okay, now I'm going to take one of these 8 by 9 pieces where we've scored half an inch and 8.5 and, and trim the corners. And I am going to adhere score tape on just on the very edge here. You could do this before you trim if you want to have a nice crisp line. You also, instead of using score tape, well, let me let me do one with score tape. Now I'll remove, I'll fold it now and burnish again. So I'm going to fold it down. So we've got it up, facing up. I'm going to take that flap and fold it down. I'm going to turn it over and burnish it. Then I'm going to take this off. I'm going to take one of my 8x8 eight eight pieces and very carefully I line up one of the corners, then I line up the edge and I push it down. And now we've got the base page. That is all there is to it. You could also, if you want, take one of the pieces. I turn it over because here is where the valley of your score is. Turn it over so that's where the mountain is and fold it in. It, it seems to fold easier if you fold that way. Now you also could take your art glitter glue. I don't know about other adhesives. Other people swear by different ones, but uh, you know, I, I just tell you what I've used, and I've used the art glitter glue, and it works for me. So you could go like that and that, and just make sure it's adhered well, burnish it, and you're good to go. So whether you use the art glitter glue or the score tape, go ahead and do the remaining four pieces. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take our base pages and put them on the spine. I usually start from the back, and you want to take your time with this because it's important that the first piece is straight. So I'm going to take off my score tape, and so the base page is like a tube. So it opens up and it's going to slip into here. Before I put the page on, I add a touch of glue to the very top edge. And then I open this up, start at one end, go to the other, and slip it down. Now you don't want to go all the way to the bottom, you just want to cover that quarter inch score tape that you put. I will pull up the back cover and just make sure there's the same distance on both sides um, and that it's not 
cattywampus. You have to just make sure it's straight. And then I'll start in the center and push down to adhere it. And flip to the back. And then go ahead with the other five pieces. So take off the score tape. Add a bit of glue to the top. And the reason we're doing that is so um, if you put a page into that pocket, I know it's not that straight, but it does the job. If you put a page into the pocket, it's not going to get caught onto that tape. It The glue will close up the sleeve. So again, we're going to put this on. Sometimes you have to go back and forth a little bit to wiggle it in. Then in this one, I'm going to pull up the page I just put in and make sure it's straight. This side needs to be down a little bit. And then once I know it's straight, then I'll push that down, push this down. When I get all the pages down, I'm going to go back and burnish real well. But go ahead and put the rest of your pages on. Okay, now I'll take my bone folder and gently burnish. Also at the same time, making sure that the glue uh, will close up that pocket. Okay, and there you go. So now what you have is the base album. You've got the cover, the spine, the back cover, and your pages. And once you've got this made, you can go in any direction. So what we're going to do is um, do a different page style each month. And again, you could do one album with the same page style on six pages or different six different page styles all together. Or you could make up your own. You know, after you've done a couple, then you'll get the ideas to come up with something that works for your particular paper pad or the purpose you're going to do. So thanks for following along. If you have any questions, please put them in the description box below. And don't forget to subscribe so you're notified of when the next part, part of this tutorial comes out. Again, thanks for watching.